Life keeps to its own timetable, not ours. Oh, it doesn't stop us from trying. Massive Chalice is out. Surprise! And this half-tactical, half-strategy game spans many generations, ensuring you'll be about 50 years into your game before realizing you should have been playing it differently the whole time. So here are some tips and tricks to make sure you get a head start on this long journey. You start the game off immediately on the battlefield, so let's tackle the basics of combat first. It's turn-based, and each of your characters have action points to spend in movement, attacks, and other actions like health potions. Think XCOM. When you move, keep in the orange area to ensure if you find a bad guy, you have another move to attack. Many of the bad guys, like these explodey type guys, are best taken down as soon as possible and not next to you. If you right click, it'll shortcut the order so you don't have to confirm. You can also spin the camera with Q and E and switch to your next hero with tab to save some time. Something important to understand are positioning your melee attacks. Left click a skill, left click the enemy, and before you confirm, press the adjust melee position button. It's the dotted pathing line with an X marks the spot on it. This is really useful for making sure that your hero isn't standing right next to a corruption patch or lining up a sweet knockback attack on multiple characters with your caber jack. There are some icons that show up on your enemy's health bars that can help you. The eyeball shows up if your hero can see your enemy from a new location. This is important for your ranger to see if he can take a shot. There's also an explosion icon that will show up specifically for alchemists, so you know that they can throw their exploding flask from the new location. Always take the safe route when on the battlefield to keep your damage to a minimum. Taking any damage can actually take away experience from your heroes, so keep them healthy, even if it takes a little longer. Hero experience is one of the most important aspects of Massive Chalice. Regents and partners train their kids, which are known as trainees in the game. It's basically any hero that's under 15 years of age. The parents pass down some of their experience every day, so you want to make sure that you're marrying off some of the highest experienced heroes. That ensures that your next generation comes out strong and ready to fight. You can build a Carucible to help out with the training as well. You can retire a high-experienced hero in this building, they're known as Standards, and they'll act as kind of like a third parent for all the trainees in the nation, giving everyone a little bit of experience every day. This can really help your curve, so don't forget to do it. When it comes to making babies, there's a few things to consider. Recessive genes can be tricky. Even though a hero might have mostly positive genetics, they might carry something negative. When setting up your first bloodline, it's a good idea to look at the brothers and sisters of that hero. If the siblings have a lot of negative traits, it's a good indication that that hero might not be as great as you thought they were. There are some really dangerous genetics to look out for. Asthma will keep your character from moving long distances and will hinder you in the long run. Slow is another terrible one. It's basically like permanent asthma. Heart disease is a really bad one. This reduces a hero's lifespan by a significant margin, giving that hero less time to fight or retire. Snuff these out in the beginning to keep your family genetics strong. Personality traits can be dangerous too. You have less control over these, but a hero's children are more likely to pick up the personalities of their parents. Standards from the Crucible can't pass on any genetic traits, but they can pass on personality traits. So you might not want to pick the guy who's got a thing for whiskey. Research is another important aspect of strategy. Building out the map is super important. You know, keeps, crucibles, sage right guilds, yada yada. But you won't be able to get any tactical equipment if you're just building the buildings. So definitely consider getting some items for your heroes along the way, like improved armor. Certain armor actually becomes a necessity when you get about 100 years in, so think ahead. Sage rites can really help out with your research. Just be sure not to retire too many heroes into the guild. That's right, you don't actually have to have three. You need people to fight too, especially in the beginning. So consider just a few at start. The map is constructed in the form of an inner ring and an outer ring. The Cadence always attacks territories on the outer ring first. They can't attack the inner ring unless the outer territories fall. So fill up your buildings on the inner ring first. These will be protected from the Cadence at the start of the game until things go south. Massive Chalice trains the characters and you through time and experience. You might be several hours in before you realize your build is not working. Don't be afraid to start over with new tactics and builds until you find a society that feels strong. 
After all, no empire lasts forever, and winter is coming. But you got this. <laughs>